Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gamer Tidicom video. We have a weekly Radeon rumor roundup. That, that's a rhymey thing. I like it. Anyway, there's been a lot of updates concerning the AMD 300 series of cards, and frankly, some of them are really tiny updates in terms of the hardware. But we'll quickly breeze over them. The main purpose of this video, however, is to say that Fiji, or whatever the hell you want to call it, it was of course, of course originally known as a 390X, then some people were saying it's going to be separate. Well, from the latest rumours, the 390X and Fiji are completely different GPUs. There are significant differences in the hardware. But, more over than that, the actual official name of Fiji is not Fiji. That's the code name. In fact, the GPU is going to be known as the AMD Radeon Fury. Fury, in other words, will be AMD's equivalent of the Titan lineup. It will be a separate GPU for the ultra bleeding eye high end gamer that just needs everything at 4K or what have you. Fury is also not new to AMD or the ATI brand or the Radeon brand, should I say. Back in the day, AMD bought out ATI in 2008, including all of its brands. So that obviously means technically the Radeon name and everything else AMD own. But back in the day, ATI actually released Rage Fury Max and other GPUs under the Fury name. And this was, for example, back in 64 megabyte days. And I remember looking at those adverts longingly. Anyway, what we're going to be seeing here is a enhanced version of uh, Hawaii Silicon. Now, we don't exactly know what that means, but we can probably assume it's going to have some of the changes that, say, Tonga introduced. For example, maybe improved compression technology, better tessellation. For example, if you were to do a comparison, or you could just look at our comparison if you want, I'm certainly not going to say no, of the Radeon R9 280, and compare that to the 285, you'll notice a subtle difference, and that is, yes, the 285 has a VRAM bandwidth, but the performance is actually about the same, and the main reason behind that is because of better compression technologies, for A, and also there's another benefit of the 285, the Tonga-based architecture, and that is that it's actually... Uh, got much higher tessellation performance, which is something that we're noticing in Witcher. So some people are reporting, for example, the Witcher actually performs a little bit better on those GPUs, just for your FYI. So the Fury is going to have 4096 shaders, it's going to have high bandwidth memory, which is clocked between 1 and 1.25 gigahertz. I don't know the clock speed. People are reporting different things. This means the total bandwidth is going to be 512 to 640 gigabytes. Uh, um, yeah, gigabytes per second. Good old brain not working properly today. And compute performance is going to be the 8.5 TFOPS. In other words, yawn, everything we've been hearing for the last several weeks. Nothing new there. The 390X, however, is based on Hawaii XT architecture, which is effectively the same GPU as the Radeon R9 290X. So if you want to start waving at the 290X and say hello there, What's the difference? Well, mostly what we've just talked about in previous videos, um, it's effectively going to have higher clock frequencies on the memory. So it's going to go from 5 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz. Same amount of um, memory interface, uh, same width memory interface, 512 bit. But the total bandwidth is going to go up quite considerably. It's going to be 384 gigabytes per second compared to 320. Um, and compute performance is going to also rise just a smidgen, um, around 300 G flops. It's going to be 5.9 T flops compared to 5.6, which is thanks to a small increase in clock speed, 50 megahertz. I'm going to assume that there will be other changes. It, there could possibly be some changes in the background. Uh, maybe they're going to implement some of the Tonga architecture changes. I don't know. But this GPU, the 390X, is, all intents and purposes, going to be focused on still high-end gaming, obviously 8GB of RAM. It's not going to be focused on like a 720p or 1080p screen, hell no. But it's not for the bleeding-edge gamer. It's not for those who demand virtual reality or those who demand 
you know, to run multiple you know, 4K monitors or something ludicrous, though. I'm not sure even the, the Fury could do that. Still, there is a lot to take in here. I'm kind of kind of excited, actually, about the GPU launch. Less so for the free 90X. I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, awful or anything like that. But my guess, and this is based on the fact that I have not played with these GPUs yet, and I'm just purely um, going on what I know about the Radeon architecture, it's going to be a little bit like Maxwell. Um, I, I refer to the 390X, not the Fury here. So, in other words, it's probably going to be an improvement at one of the reasons that behind this, of course, is that the free, uh, 290X was having memory bandwidth problems. Some of this was solved on the, ten on the Tonga architecture, so we have to see how some of this plays in. But, even so, 6 teaflops of computing performance, assuming the drivers are fairly solid, which obviously they've released some drivers now for The Witcher and other titles, which have improved performance. Um, and as for the Fury, that, that, that could be pretty damn impressive. I think we all know that that could just be absolutely ludicrous. And if you overclock as well, I mean, if you overclock the, the shaders, let's say you put that to like 1.1 gigahertz or 1.15 or something, you're going to be just looking at insane performance. It won't really take much to nudge this to 90 flops, which I think high-end bleeding-edge overclockers, I would not be surprised if you saw some people break the 10 T flop mark with this card. Obviously, it will depend some on what power they can actually get into the GPU, you know, what's TDP and stuff, so you're probably going to be looking for some extreme measures. Uh, I don't think you're going to be doing this with just kind of standing there with a desk fan aiming at it or whatever, but I think some high-end overclockers are going to just be doing some insane stuff with this GPU, at least potentially. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.